Well, hello there. Uh, you've just caught me reading a book on the Anthropocene, the time in history really where we started having a big effect on the environment and everything else around us. You might have gotten me at a wrong time because this is very late at night. I don't usually... Okay, I'm lying. I, I always read this late into the night. I kind of like reading late into the night. It feels special to me, even if I know I'm supposed to be awake at 6.30 a.m. It's always at this time of night that, well, a lot of thoughts pass through my head. I often think about the problems that are currently happening in my life and trying to find solutions to fix those problems. I try to plan out solutions in my mind to hopefully sleep with a clear mind, but it doesn't really work that way. Thing is, when I live out those scenarios in real life, when I try out those solutions in real life, it often ends up disappointing me. I think there's a lie that we all like to tell ourselves about life, that it can be solved, that eventually the puzzle will solve itself and everything will be perfect and everything will be fine until the day we're ready to pass away. I feel we have too much hope and I know that hope is sometimes needed, especially in situations out of our control. Hope can help us get through those situations, those tough situations, but hope always ends up as a lie, a lie that things will finally come together and that they will stay that way forever. In reality, without giving up hope, a hope that eventually everything will solve itself. A hope that we'll eventually become a better person. We can't really live with who we are now, right now, in this moment. The truth is, things never really get solved. They come together and they fall apart. And they come together again and they fall apart again. There will always be a time when eventually things fall apart. I struggle a lot with the idea of change, the idea that things are always in transition, that there will never be a fully completed puzzle. And even if I experience this phenomenon again and again, I always let hope back in to help me convince myself that maybe if I don't change, then maybe the things that are happening to me won't change either. We keep setting expectations for the world that it just cannot allow to happen. In fact, I would like to have no expectations for the world at all. I would like to have no judgment on it at all. I would like to one day be forgotten by it and disappear forever. It's not because I'm disappointed by it, and it's not because I would like to forget about it either. It's because the well-known human cycle of seeking pleasurable states and avoiding pain is determined by this hope we place in the world. In reality, there will never truly be a way to avoid pain in our lives, and I feel that running from it instead of facing it with courage will hurt us even more. There's nothing wrong with seeing the inherent chaos of life for what it is. In fact, it can sometimes bring a sense of relief to see that there's truly no stable ground for us to stand on. But even if we know this as true, we will still fall into the cycle until we learn it through experiencing this hope and this disappointment continuously. Until we become tired of this repeating cycle. Too tired to try to pursue it again. Some people go through it faster simply because of the circumstances that they find themselves in. In my case, I've been very lucky. So I have to create my own struggle or else it will come to me eventually. And I do just that by creating goals and trying to pursue them. That sounds a bit tedious and annoying. But fortunately, I find that struggle is beautiful because there's nothing more synonymous with life itself. Struggle leads to growth, to change, to move forward in a sense. You're sort of joining hands with the reality of life instead of fighting against it. And life is curious, interesting, and beautiful, especially when you look at it from an outside perspective. Even the fact that we're alive and conscious of it is beautiful although I often forget that fact myself. When I very rarely take the time to take a step back and observe everything happening in my own mind, the constant stream of useless chatter that cements the narrative that I've chosen to believe in my life. When I stop this stream for even just a second, when I can stand completely still without any stimuli, it makes me realize how much I prevent myself from 
seeing reality as it is. There's a fundamental groundlessness just lying there in wait. And in fact, to deny that and hope that eventually we'll be able to find stable ground to stand on is pure cope. To be fully alive is to be constantly thrown out into the unknown, to continually experience things that are new and fresh to us. To live is to change constantly. And to accept that is almost impossible when we're happy because we don't want things to change. But when things are difficult, we do want things to change. A lot of times I have to remind myself that change is a good thing, especially in the not so good moments of my life. Without change, I wouldn't have authentic shawarma right next door or pizza, which might not be as authentic. There wouldn't be any rain falling right now, I wouldn't even exist. Acceptance is hard, very hard, but there's a reason that it stands as the last stage of grief. It's something that needs to happen if we want to learn to develop a true appreciation of life. I'm not saying this as a sage or as a person that is trying to teach everyone how they reach nirvana, but more as someone that also needs to learn these lessons over and over and over again. It's actually funny how much joy we can find when we search internally. Most of the time, it's just best to be aware of our thoughts without rating them as good or bad, but just seeing them, just observing them and recognizing them. There's no need to go any further than that. We're just thinking, really. We don't have to have an opinion on ourselves at all, actually. We can just see these thoughts passing through and recognize them as they are. And that goes double with negative emotions. When we experience loneliness, for example, we want to always label it as a bad thing, as something that we need to prevent from happening, as something to distract ourselves from. But maybe for once we can try sitting with it recognizing it and maybe having sort of a talk with it you know just listening to it for once maybe our ways of dealing with our emotions can change that way we can fill them out instead of trying to prevent them in the first place you know even with me saying all this late night thinking stuff feeling inspired at 3 a.m to make change in my life for once and to take action. Reality is not the same as my aspirations. Reality hits back. It's not like I'll suddenly start a newfound appreciation of cleaning my bed sheets or shoveling snow after a big snowstorm. Those are stupid as fuck. When I suddenly have an exhausting day where my battery light and my ABS light turn on, my friends cancel plans last minute, and my fucking frozen pizza falls through the oven rack then yeah it's really hard to stay disciplined okay sometimes i just want to jack off and and go to bed there's an interesting tension between our aspirations and the reality of boredom tiredness feeling stressed and other less pleasant emotions when something that we can't control happens there are times when i feel incompetent because i can't accomplish what i set out to do in the beginning and i say to myself that if it were someone else they would be able to do it but i can't you know i, I feel really stupid sometimes but you know instead of judging myself maybe i could just stop right there at feeling uncomfortable with myself with the energy of wanting to do stuff but not doing it and just hang out there for a moment with that painful feeling. Maybe I can just sit with it and learn from it, listen to it. I can either cling to pure copium to distract myself from the pain, saying it's because I'm an idiot and unable to do basic tasks or just be exposed to the raw pain of the moment. It sounds like a really fun experience, I know, I know. but. It's a nice chance to realize that this mundane world is all there is. There's nothing wrong with that, really. The world doesn't have to be incredible, and it doesn't have to be miserable either. It can just be there. It won't care either way, really, if you think it's incredible or miserable. It doesn't really care. Anyways, I'll... I'll... Okay, I'm saying I'll go to sleep, but I'll probably go back to this book um for now temporarily 
Just another chapter, right? God damn.